no matter what, Royal Rumble is always special because that's the show, that's the moment in time every year that I look at and I say that is the start of the road to Mania. This is when WrestleMania season officially begins. And, you know, you talk about the Royal Rumble matches and the unique concept, although you have two of those matches in the same show, it kind of diminishes the uniqueness of it, blah, blah, blah. It's still the Royal Rumble. It's still a big deal. It always will be a big deal to me until the day I die. Yet, watching this show Saturday night, thankfully on a Saturday night, not a Sunday night, that I thank WWE for. It just left me wondering, how hard is it to do a big show in an even halfway decent way? This show was steaming hot garbage. If you've ever felt or thought that Triple H was going to be this magical cure-all for the creative of WWE's programming, <laughs> you got another thing coming. So it's just bad. He knew he was in for a long night when the Men's Royal Rumble match kicked off the show. Understand why they did it? Especially seeing how the show played out. Thank God they did it this way. But yeah, this Men's Royal Rumble match stunk. It's the second straight year with a botched Kofi spot. Way to go. One of the most interesting things about this match for fans during and afterwards, was what happened to Rey Mysterio? Ha ha, where's Rey Mysterio? Cody Rhodes didn't beat 30 other people. He only beat 29. Never mind, the basic mathematics indicates that if Cody Rhodes is one of the 30, he can only possibly beat 29 others. And if Rey didn't appear, he's only 28 others. And it's not like this is the first time this has ever happened. How could you not fucking see when his son came out next and he's wearing his daddy's mask? You know where this is fucking going. Oh my God. Like this was one of the big things the fans were talking about. Unbelievable. Booker T and Edge were highlights. Especially Beth Phoenix coming out in... Beer in the peg, mommy. Um, I love Booker T. Get in, get your shit in, and get out of the way. Love it, love it, love it. The best part of this match, and most of the show, frankly, was Pat McAfee making his return on commentary. I love the Corey Graves dig, by the way, at Dave Meltzer. That was fantastic. Uh, the commentary, I thought, was actually good throughout most of the night. It was one of the few things I enjoyed about this show. Logan Paul was another one. As much as you don't want to like this son of a bitch, there is no doubt that this guy gets it. And it's funny to me when I see the scene of all the wrestlers turning and trying to attack Logan Paul. They shouldn't be jealous at him. They should be mad at themselves for sucking so much donkey dick as performers. How the fuck you let a YouTuber come in and be one of the most interesting and appealing characters on the damn show? That spot between him and Ricochet will go down in history. Like, we'll be talking about that shit for years. And most all the other people on this card, and in this match in particular, you'll be lucky to remember any damn thing about the WWE run. Logan Paul, greater than Cody Rhodes. You think I'm lying. You know I'm not. Here's my problem with this whole match at the end of the day. And sure, you can look at it and say, Gunther went over 70 minutes. And that's fantastic. And it made him look great. I guess. You're going to say, well, you just hate Cody Rhodes, so you didn't want him to win. I cannot like the guy and see the bigger picture. And I'm also clearly articulating my points before about why I don't think he should have won the Rumble. And why I don't think he's the one that should beat Roman Reigns. And that's not because I hate the guy. Oh, fucking idiots. The problem is, is after that lengthy exchange between Gunther and Cody Rhodes, I much more want to see Gunther versus Cody Rhodes feud for the Intercontinental Championship then I do want to see Cody go after anybody in the frickin' world title. It hyped me up for the wrong damn match. 
It was interesting during this match because they had to make sure that nothing took the shine off of Cody Rhodes. Like you injected Lashley and Lesnar into the middle of it, let them do a little shit, then you got them the fuck out of the way. You intentionally kept Sami Zayn out of it, which was the right decision, by the way, based off of where you were going later in the night, but also knowing you don't want to have a Batista Daniel Bryan damn moment. But yeah, Cody winning the Rumble, you guys can celebrate if you want. I think it was stupid. Uh, th th that wasn't the worst thing on the show. I don't know what was. Maybe this match was. Uh, but the pitch black match. I'm cool with doing the sponsor shit, but does it always have to be such shit? It felt like this is something you could have done one time for Naomi with the Feel the Glow character, and it would have made sense. This pitch black shit with LA Knight and Bray Wyatt was freaking dumb. And Bray Wyatt, the more you watch him, the more you realize, oh, maybe that's why they got rid of him and they didn't feel so bad about it a while back. Because there's all this sizzle about him, and then he gets in the ring, and it... <clears throat> and I sat there before the match, and I said, L.A. Knight is a better character than Bray Wyatt, so of course Bray Wyatt's going to win, and that's exactly what happened. And Uncle Howdy, all I've got to say is this, why'd you do that to the stage, man? The stage has kids! He has a family! I mean, you missed L.A. Knight by about that freaking much, but it was bad. You literally should have just done the entrance and just done that Uncle Howdy spot and called it a fucking day and it would have been so much better than what this ultimately was. Raw Women's Championship was the third match of the night and it was the third dud of the night in my opinion. At this point, I think everything involving Alexa Bliss kind of sucks. The whole thing going back with her and Bray Wyatt is fucking dumb. I don't care. The finish just kind of seemed to happen out of nowhere and it was flat. And thankfully it was over, it felt like, relatively quickly. But again, third match of the night, third dud to me. The women's Royal Rumble match wasn't a whole lot better. It wasn't worse than the men's match, but I don't really think it was any better. The fans just didn't care as much, it didn't seem like, for some of the NXT women. Um, I thought Zoe Stark had a decent showing, Raquel Rodriguez had a decent showing, but you look at who was in this match, and honestly, just because you can do a 30-woman match doesn't mean you need to. Frankly... Having two 30-people rumble matches on one show is too much, to me at least. You could have gotten away with 20. Wish you would have. The, 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 one of the best parts of the night, though, was when you get to number 30 and they totally botched the Nia Jax surprise reveal. <laughs> the countdown clock starts 10. Nah, here's Nia Jax's music. That was amazing. I'll say that. Uh, the finish, Rhea Ripley, the peg mommy, um, s does the, the fucking <laughs> head scissors to live, throws her out, eliminates her. And all I care about is peg mommy, please go take the strap off of fucking Charlotte already. To which some of you are going to say, well, she's going after Bianca. She's destined to go that way. And what I'm saying is go down the right path. Seek your revenge of a couple years ago. Go take the belt off of fucking Charlotte. Horrible. But the worst thing of the night, beyond question, had to be the Rock concert. I saw Hardy trending before the show, and I thought maybe WWE was uh, being demented and bringing Jeff Hardy back as some type of surprise. I don't fucking know. I don't care. And how fitting it was that a mid-ass show had a brutal-ass musical performance. Like, this was dog shit. And not just in the, oh, I take wrestling too seriously and I don't want to see this music shit. No, this was legit dog shit. Could you imagine being a fan of this group, this band, and saying to yourself, I want to pay my money to watch them live. Is that how low our standards have gotten as a society? Is that acts like that are over? That acts like that make fucking money? I know I sound like a boomer right now. Angry man yelling at the clouds. But that was uncategorical, positive bullshit. How the fuck could anybody think that was good? How could anybody think that that is great music? Tell me, please. It was horse shit. And the last horse shit that this show needed at 11 the 30 p.m. Eastern, period. Could have cut this whole shit out. Because all it did was delay the main event. And it was the main event at this point I was looking to. It's not going to save the night for me, but at least leave a good taste in my mouth after having to sit through four plus hours of this shit. And leave it to this another big show for the Bloodline to have to try and save. And they did their best. 
And for all those that were wondering or hoping that The Rock would show, you know what, honestly, maybe it's better he didn't, especially with the way the post-match played out. You could have fit it in there, but you really didn't need to. So it's cool at this point. This is easily the best story in wrestling now and probably has been for a number of years. Seriously, that's not recency bias. That's not hyperbole. To me, that is reality. Like, objectively, this story is freaking awesome. And after the match and the handcuffing of KO on the ropes and the bloodline attacking Kevin Owens and knocking him out of his fat fucking misery, the spot with Roman giving Sammy the chair and telling him he needs to be the one to do it. And Seth Rollins style, here comes Sammy Zayn, whack across the back of the tribal chief. Holy shit, that crowd nutted. There are roars, there are pops. There's blowing the roof off the joint, and then there's almost like white hot nuclear pop. That was a nuclear pop if I've ever freaking heard one. That place like raised octaves. They wanted this. They could feel it. And I can't imagine watching how this played out at the end, seeing that, and saying to yourself, yeah, we think Cody Rhodes is the one that should face Roman Reigns at WrestleMania. He's the one that should contend for the titles, maybe the one to win the titles. No. It has to be Sami Zayn. I can't imagine this is even a debate at this point. Look, the Royal Rumble, part of what I thought made both of these Rumble matches suck on this show, was you need stories that play out. You need powerful characters. You need memorable moments. And both of the Rumble matches were overall lacking in those big time. But here, you had characters, you had storytelling, you had big moments. Like, this shit works so well. And it only gets more important at WrestleMania. Ignore the fucking Meltzer marks that mark out for all the goddamn moves that don't matter. It's about characters, it's about stories, it's about moments that matter. Moments that people remember. Trying to force Cody down that path ain't the ticket, I promise you. The characters are better. The story is better. The payoff is better. The match would be better. Sami Zayn versus Roman Reigns at WrestleMania, and whatever fashion you want to do it, has to be the match that you do. Not paying it off at Elimination Chamber. Not paying it off by having Kevin Owens and Sami Zayn win the tag titles at Mania. I don't know, that's fucking dumb. That's fucking stupid. If anything, it's also better for Cody Rhodes' character to not win it now. Just throwing it out there. So, the ending of this show was great. The problem is it took four hours to get to the fucking punchline and point here. It didn't save the rest of this show the rest of this show I thought was hot, steaming trash. And if you ever trying to make the argument of how Triple H was better than Vince from a creative standpoint for the WWE long term, well, <laughs> you sure as hell couldn't make that argument last night, in my opinion. Holy Christ. 